Hey, it's Miss Phelps, and this afternoon we're going to be talking about two pretty unrelated topics. First of all, we're going to start with two types of geometry that are called non-Euclidean, and then we're going to talk about a quadratic function. So let's get started. Uh, the first one is uh, that we're going to talk about is non-Euclidean geometry, and the first type is called spherical geometry. Now. If you look on your handout or on my on the video, you'll see that it kind of looks like a globe, and the big the circle that goes around the globe is actually that you would call the equator is actually called the great circle. It goes it basically cuts the circle in half. Now each of the lines going up and down are also cutting the circle in half. They are also great circles but they are actually the longitude lines of a globe. So it says that note that all great circles intersect and if you notice they intersect at the top and the bottom so there are no parallel lines in uh, spherical geometry. So that's something to keep in mind. Also if you were to put a triangle on a globe which I'll show you tomorrow in class it actually makes a triangle that's actually greater than 90 degrees. Okay, so that's just a little introduction about spherical geometry. Now let's talk about the other type, which they call hyperbolic. All right, hyperbolic um, is a figure that looks like a concave disk. Now we have not talked about concave yet, but concave kind of means it goes inward, so it would sort of look like a bowl or uh, the inside of a plate, it sort of curves, it goes downward but it curves up on the sides. Okay, and it says that lines appear to be curves on the flat, on the surface of the disc, although if flattened onto a plane, it would be linear. All right, so here's a picture of what it looks like. And like I said, it's a disc, you need to think of it as a disc. Um, this is not a sphere, but it is the inside of a curved disk. Note that P is parallel to S, T, and V. Now, this is not what you would typically think of as parallel, but the rule for parallel says it's in the, on the same plane, but they, the lines never touch. And if you look at that, that is true about line P. It never touches S, T, or V. All right. Um, there are an infinite number of curves that can be drawn through the point and not intersect point P. So again, I'll show you examples, some more examples of that tomorrow. I just want to kind of get you used to knowing what these different types are because I have a feeling you may see them again. All right, now let's change gears and go to quadratic function. All right. Quadratic function is actually um, a different type of function than what we've been talking about. We've been talking about linear in our classroom and we've talked about the slope and um, how you know if it's positive or negative and those kind of things. But we're going to do a little changing and we're going to talk about quadratic function. Alright, so uh, first of all, this is the general form. It's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Alright. The critical parts. Most can be determined by using the graphing calculator and analyzing the graph. Now, if you notice, I actually put a picture of each of those up here. So let's kind of go through this a bit. It says the vertex point. The vertex point is actually right where it's either the bottom or the top of the picture. So that's the vertex, and there's just one point that's actually the very top or the very bottom. Now, if the parabola or the quadratic function is, is a normal one, then it faces upward, so it basically looks like a U. If it's a negative um, function, then it's headed downwards, and, you know, I guess it's an upside-down U. But that's basically what the two look like, and it tells you that the vertex point, if it's headed upward, then it has a positive vertex. If it's headed down, if it's a negative, then it's headed downward. But that is still the vertex, the very top or the very bottom of the point. There is what they call an axis of symmetry, 
and that's like the very middle of where um, the parabola is and that means that the left side looks exactly like the right side all right let's go on the y-intercept is obviously where it crossed the y-axis and the x-intercept is also what they call the zero points okay so it's where it crosses the the x line basically and that means that the y's are going to be zero all right and i think that is it for today i hope you've enjoyed your weekend i will see you tomorrow and have a great day and you know